Mark Scotty reporting on the William Barr grilling on Congress yesterday. Wow, five hours. Guy was like, he was throwing, they were throwing, they threw everything at him, right? But it was very predictable, of course. Every Democrat says, you're a liar. You, you're biased to the president. And every, every Republican turns around and says, oh, he did a fantastic job. What a great job Mr. Barr did, right? They're all protecting their own interests uh, on the Hill. And it wasn't, that wasn't the takeaway at all. That was very predictable. But I'll tell you, I'm going to give you two takeaways from the whole thing. Right? I watched most of it in pieces. I had probably some total of four hours. And uh, without, you know, because I don't drink coffee anymore, so it was like, it was very painful to watch, man. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it was like, I mean, what has become of our democracy where there's, they're not arguing, they're not arguing on behalf of the American people or the truth. It's clearly, it's clearly what horse are they going to back in the next coming election? And how does that horse represent me personally? That's, that's, that's their, their, uh, Pretty much their view, you know. It's it's become a sad reality. But the two, the, there's actually two takeaways. One, the one is um, that William Barr never explored the underlying evidence in the Robert Mueller witch hunt, the Robert Mueller investigation into collusion with the president of the United States and Russia. Uh, he never he he accepted. He accepted the report as the evidence, which I found to be very profound. We'll hear him say it in his own words. The other thing is that the report itself, because nobody in the entire four hours and all the senators that we heard, nobody challenged the, the idea that the convenient truth that Russia hacked the DNC. Not a single one of them, a uh, single senator yesterday uh, challenged that, and William Barr pretty much didn't challenge it either. He said, no, 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 it's whatever's in the report, whatever Mueller is acting as the attorney general at the time, and then he hands in his report, and then then Rob William Barr takes over uh, as the attorney general. That's kind of how William Barr described it. Right? But the fact that that um, <laughs> that Nobody, nobody addressed the fact that the Russians hacked the DNC is, is quite profound. It becomes truth, right? Because it didn't happen. Right? There is no 12 Russians. If they are 12 Russians, they didn't have anything whatsoever to do with, with the hacking or the release of information from the DNC. That was clearly an inside job. Absolutely. So let's look at those things. But there's two other things. Let's take a look at uh, some just some current events uh, because it, it ties into the big picture, right? How does this? How does our distorted politics, you know, uh, affect the world? And we'll look right now. So Venezuela is on fire, right? So we'll just look at Venezuela and a little news on on uh, Julian Assange. This is what's going on in Venezuela right now. It's pretty crazy. Those are Maduro, allegedly Maduro-backed trucks running over the insurgents, right? That's what it is. Now, there's speculation and there's actual video of the insurgents pulling guys out of these trucks, these GNB trucks, and then taking over those trucks. So we don't really know who's driving these trucks. It could be the opposition. This could be just the giant school play for all we know. Nobody, nobody really knows, right? But these trucks are, are supposed to be the military. Just ran the guy over. They're playing a lot more rough than, um, than uh, in, in France. Right? The, the military and the, the police, although they're rough in, 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 in France, this is uh, the, the, the vent. It is beating the shit out of me. Forget about the team. Just beat the shit out of me. So, 
it's getting it's getting rather violent. And uh, this is uh, this is the American democracy really on display because this is what Mike Pompeo and Elliot Abrams and John Bolton and, and Donald Trump want. They want they want a, a radical radical uprising. That's what they want. They want violence. They're encouraging the violence. That's what they're saying, and they're calling this the, the brave people of Venezuela. They're pulling out the, the water cannons. So it's 90 degrees in, in Venezuela. I don't know how bad that is. I imagine if you get hit in the head with a water cannon, it's pretty bad. Firing probably live shots, throwing, throwing stink bombs. The reporter getting blown up. Sounds like live shots. I mean, you hear pa 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 pa. You think you think uh, no dead bodies. Nobody laying on the ground. Nobody laying on the ground. A lot of young people. It seems like a lot of a lot of the young young radicals join. The opposition. What's in it for them? I mean, you know, again, the rich people take over. It's a, it's a power grab, right? It's, the opposition represents a minority. The, you could call them the oligarchs, sim similar to, to America, where you have a, a few people who control, you know, who, who have all the money and, and, uh, and a, a lot of a lot of economic influence. But in this country of of a of Maduro, that they don't have enough. They don't have enough footing, right? They can't get in there and steal the oil. They can't get in there and, and control market value. Venezuela sells their oil at a discount to Cuba, to India, to China, to Russia. But the U.S. doesn't is not having it. They don't want it, right? That's the real. That's what's really going on, right? So, you know, uh, they don't. You know, they don't use the American dollar. They don't use the U.S. dollar for trade. So, so. That's really what's going on. It's now in a violent kind of, still isolated, very isolated. Millions, 50, uh, 32 million people in the country is, you know, it's a very, very small majority of youth uh, piling onto the street trying to support this Guado. Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo. Juan Guardo. Where are you, Juan Guardo? Juan Guardo's hiding in an embassy, in a foreign embassy within Caracas. Because he's scared that Maduro's going to lock him up. So that's that's uh, what's going on in Venezuela. Let's look at Julian Assange. He was in court today. Assange refuses extradition to U.S. No shit. Long legal fight expected. WikiLeaks found that Julian Assange told a London court on Thursday that he would not agree to be extradited to the United States, where he is accused of conspiring to hack into a Pentagon computer. Assange appeared by video link from a London prison, said he would not surrender. He would, he would, quote, not surrender myself for extradition for doing journalism that has won many awards and protected many people. Here, here. That's exactly what he is. Wearing jeans and a sport coat, Assange appeared calm during the brief hearing at London's Win Westminster Magistrates Court. Judge Michael Snow said it would be likely it would likely be quote many months quote unquote before a full hearing was held on the substance of the United States extradition case the judge said uh, set a procedural hearing for May 30th with a substantive hearing to follow June 12th so assange is on the move right he's on the move he's he's rolling He's, he's holding his ground, he's fist pumping, he's looking good, he's a little shaved, he's got his, he's got his, he's got, you know, video conferenced uh, in from jail, he's probably eating, he's probably seen a doctor, right, so he's doing a little better, right, a little better, and he's fighting off that extradition thing, right, so he has, to, him and his lawyers have to prove that what he did, what the Americans are claiming that he did, which is uh, espionage, basically hacking Joining a an operative, Chelsea Manning, then uh, Bradley Manning, siding with Bradley Manning, the military operative, to help 
crack a password from 2010 that revealed the uh, the war crimes, the essentially the war crimes. But the reality is that Manning already had the he had all of the information. Right? Chelsea Manning had all of that information before before because uh, if you read that if you read the uh, the actual indictment on Assange, it's very thin, it's very flimsy. So that's his job right now. So let's talk about the subject <laughs> I'm supposed to be talking about. Right? Sorry about that. So William Barr, the most profound thing that I found is this, that William Barr is an attorney, and he's Trump's attorney. At one point, he was actually going to be Trump's attorney, his personal attorney. And what, what, what William Barr did, aside from being a very astute guy to defend himself in, in front of a bunch of, you know, uh, frivolous allegations that he's biased and, and he should recluse himself and all that stuff. He did a great job in holding his ground. But, but the thing that, that I found, and I'm going to play the clip, most profound in watching it in all those hours, I watched, I yawned, I was like, oh, man, this is such bullshit. And then this happened. This happened, right? The revelation that William Barr never explored the underlying evidence in the Mueller report. Basically, he took the, the, the report itself as the evidence, which I found very profound. I think that if, if there was, if, if the Mueller report did show collusion or, or obstruction, even in a little way, um, Barr would have then taken that and then they would have looked at the underlying evidence. But so so you can you can make an argument that there is bias, but but again the profound the profoundness that that none of that Russia twelve Russians hacked the the DNC was ever looked at any more than what you know and what I know, and there's a, allegedly a, a a copy an unredacted copy of the this report in Congress where congressmen can look at it, All right, and. Um, I don't know. Lindsey Graham says it's not that it's not that different than what everybody else is seeing, and I believe him. Uh, but so let's listen to William Barr in his own words. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Barr, has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, yes or no? Could you, could you repeat that question? I will repeat it. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. Um, the president or anybody else. Seems you'd remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grapple with the word suggest. I mean, there have been discussions of, of matters out there that uh, they have not asked me to open an investigation. But Perhaps they suggested. I don't know. I wouldn't say suggest. Hinted. I don't know. Inferred. No, no. You don't know. No. Okay. Um, in your March 24th summary, you wrote that quote after reviewing the special counsel's final report. I will say that no. One sir, I'm asking a question. In your March 24th summary, you wrote that, quote, after reviewing the special counsel's final report, Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein and I have concluded that the evidence is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Now, the special counsel's investigation produced a great deal of evidence. Um, I'm led to believe it included witnesses' notes and emails, witnesses' congressional testimony, witnesses' interviews, um, which were summarized in the FBI 302 forms, former FBI Director Comey's memos, and the president's public statements. My question is in reaching your conclusion did you personally review all of the underlying evidence? Uh, no, we took and accepted. Did, did, did we accepted did Mr. Rosenstein? No, we accepted the statements in the report as the factual record. We did not go underneath it to see whether or not they were accurate. We accepted it as accurate. That is so profound, what he just said. That they didn't look, they didn't go to the underlying evidence, and nobody in the House did. That the evidence is the report. The report is the evidence. So that, what, what I'm trying to make the point is that, that the lie compounds all the way, 
that that the AG and the, the Attorney General's office, they didn't do anything to investigate. They didn't do anything. It's all on the biased Mueller report. There's, of course, Robert Mueller was biased. He's a Democratic operative. He's an FBI guy under Obama. He's giving cover for Obama. We know that, right? But even he couldn't find, he couldn't make a case for collusion because there was no there was no collusion. The collusion was between the DNC and the media, the DNC and Saudi Arabia, DNC and everybody, anybody who gave DNC money. Uh, it was the real thing, but the, uh, very profound. Right? So let's keep listening. He goes on to make the point. And made our, so made you our, accepted the report as the evidence? Yes. You did not question or look at the underlying evidence that supports the conclusions in the report? No. Did uh, Mr. Rosenstein review the evidence that underlines and supports the conclusions in the report? To your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. We accepted the statements in the report. Did anyone the in your of the evidence is true? Did anyone in your executive office review the evidence supporting the report? No. No. <laughs> Yet you represented no. to the American public that the evidence was not, quote, sufficient to support an obstruction of justice. The, no evidence, present, the evidence presented in the report. This is, not a, this is not a mysterious process. In the Department of Justice, we have process memos and declination memos every day coming up. And we don't go and look at the underlying evidence. We Sir, would you we support take the characterization of the evidence as true? As the Attorney General of the United States, you run the United States Department of Justice. If in any U.S. attorney's office around the country, the head. So, so that's she goes on again, just trying to make her own point that that you didn't look at the evidence when he just told her that the evidence was the report. Now, again, I think that that's that's William Barr moving the goalpost for Trump. That's just my opinion. That if Barr would have, because it's also my legal opinion, having been in courts and seeing how a a judge, Barr is a judge, or was a judge, and he was a CIA guy, how they move the bar in favor of the, the uh, their, you know, the, the person that they're trying to protect. William Barr was appointed by Trump. It's clear that there is bias, but you can't prove it, right? That's the fundamental problem in our country, that you can't prove it. You get a guy like this who squeaks in, and he's going to defend Trump, and uh, that's just the way it is. But, uh, but the goalpost being moved that, that, Barr, if, again, speculation, if, if they would have come back with a verdict of, if, if, if Mueller would have said collusion existed, Barr would have then moved the goalposts to say, oh, we have to look at the underlying evidence. You wouldn't have gotten that snap decision. Uh, that's my opinion. But the fact is, the fact is that election fraud occurred, and there's no mention of that ever in any of the report. The fact that Julian Assange is being a, a held, you know, prisoner for doing journalism, revealing, you know, the secrets, the things that we needed to, to know about our democracy, about our election process, about the communications within our election, uh, our elected officials, that was Julian Assange who told it to us. And now they're holding him prisoner for something that allegedly happened eight years or six years before that fact. Right, so, so that's that's the the most profound takeaway in my view. The number one most profound takeaway is that William Barr is now off. I mean, he didn't do anything, really. All he did was look at it, say, "Oh, there's no evidence," and he and he moved on. Right, but the the real testimony will come when um, when Robert Mueller steps up to the plate, and I mean, you know, just cross your fingers that someone asks him. Where did you get the idea for 12 Russians? Where did the story come from? What did you base it? What did you base the 12 r fake Russian narrative on? Was it CrowdStrike? Did you ever explore those those D the DNC's servers? Did you ever look at the evidence? What evidence did you come to the conclusion that 12 Russians hacked the the DNC when all of the evidence, all of the the obvious the obvious points to a leak from a, a, a specific individual, even in the testimony of the publisher, the guy who published it, the best we can come up with is that absolutely Russia didn't do it and that someone else did. 
Is anybody going to press Mueller at these congressional hearings in Senate or House? Probably not. So I want to look at one other fact that this guy said right here, side of the DNC. If the one candidate would come forward. Now, Trump has shown signs that crazy Bernie, you know, they're going to screw him again. What, what, why? They screwed him the last time, Trump. Say, it, say what happened then. How He's did they screw us. him? They screwed him by cheating him. And why? They cheated him because... Because, because, they she fucking cheated him because he's a, he, he represents the people. He represents the, the voice of the people, 70% of the people. Now, it's a 100% chance that Joe Biden is not going to go there. But there is a, whoever, if Sanders, if Sanders can, can come for, I'm, I'm making my prediction is what I'm doing, right? I'm making my prediction. I did this uh, on April 29th. So I did this like three days ago. This was a piece. Whoever tells the truth first about heckle, uh, hackless Russia Gate will win the presidency 2020. Right? I, I have I have now pretty much confirmed in my mind that this will that the the it's not going to stop with Russia. Based on what I heard at that listening to the senators grill William Barr, they all seem to conclude that we have to protect our country from, from hacking and, and, and foreign influence. But nobody, I mean, I think uh, Amy Klobuchar made a statement that we should go to paper ballots. And that, again, that's, it's li- too little too late. Where were you, you know, a month ago and, and three years ago uh, saying that? Now all of a sudden it makes sense to have paper ballots to, to uh, stop the cheating because if you don't think Trump's going to cheat and the Republicans are going to rig machines, if you think it's just the DNC and the, and the Democrats doing it, you're out of your freaking mind. Right? They all cheat. The machines are rigged. Right? So, so what I'm saying is this. In my prediction, I'm predicting it here and now. I'll do more on this later. That the, 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 the whole idea of the Democratic primary at this point is to stop Bernie Sanders. That's the idea. Why? Because Bernie Sanders represents real change where get money out of politics, break up the banks, right? The real economic problems of this country that we're facing, why there's vast income and wealth inequality. The only candidate, the original candidate, the number one candidate is Bernie Sanders. Health care for all. Universal you know, college tuition paid, right? Money out of politics. Lower the, the military budget. On and on and on. Overturn Citizens United. Get money out of politics, right? right? And all the, all the things that Sanders stands for, right? Green New Deal, right? Pharmaceutical industrial complex. Cut them out of the equation, right? Big oil. Shut it down, right? Move towards alternative energies. Bernie Sanders is the, is the, the founder of that message. If you're late to the game... He created the whole argument, and the the Democratic operatives, right? The 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 crowd, you know, what is it? Uh, crowd strike. You could say crowd strike, but correct the record and David Brock and the Stop Sanders movement, who are now pushing Joe Biden to the forefront. Joe Biden shit sandwich. Not a chance on earth that he's going to beat. Not ten bill. Not a billion. Not ten billion dollars is going to make. Joe Biden beat Donald Trump. It's not going to happen. Right? No way. Because Joe Biden does not represent the people. Joe Biden is just a talking head that's catering to the, to the, to the sympathy. He's, he's, he's playing into the lowest denominator. He's telling the people in Ohio and Pennsylvania eh, that Trump is not for you, that I'm for you. You know, you know Joe Biden was for the T, T, TPP. He was for NAFTA. He was he wrote the crime bill. Right? All of the things that happened under Obama, all of the the extraction of wealth from the middle class that was given to the to the to the billionaire class was was un, Joe Biden was in the office next to Obama. They were standing there, kumba, holding hands. Right? So so Biden can't win. the The idea that Kamala Harris, although is she's articulate and she's a woman and she's black and and she's can. This is, and uh, there is there is some she could she could swing the vote in California. That's her function. Her function is to stop Bernie in on 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 um, Super Tuesday in California to t- siphon away at least fifteen or twenty percent of the vote 
from Bernie Sanders. So Biden, right? So so what I'm saying is this. Here's the prediction, right? And I'll go more into it as we move on, right? What else did I say? Let's see. Forward and unequivocally say, right, in his own voice that the Democratic Party cheated him, right? Straight out says it. He, he'll be the next president of the United States because all of the smart people will then coalesce around him. But right now, you've got a lot of the... The, uh, the the Bernie tried and true, the, the, the shut-eye Bernie lovers. They're just, oh, I love Bernie. He must be right. I don't, I don't buy that on any politician. I, I certainly don't buy it with Trump, never did. And, you know, Trump is 99% bullshit. And every once in a while, a little truth will squeak out. Sanders is, you know, 85%. You know, he's, he's more like... He's more like only maybe fifteen to twenty percent bullshit, and the rest of the rest of uh, his his rhetoric is probably eighty five percent accurate. But that fifteen percent is still enough to sink you because it's the important fifteen percent, the 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 part that says that the elect the elections are fake, right? and that they're going to screw him again. They're gonna they're going they're doing it not that way, but they'll find another way. And this way is to the new way is to stack a lot of candidates up front. Rig California. They're definitely going to rig California. That the, the election that happens uh, on um, uh, the big Tuesday. Super, this guy is so smart. Super Tuesday, uh, only a month out from Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, they're going to rig California, and they're going to steal votes away from Sanders, and that's where they'll stop him. Because after that day, forty percent of the vote will have been entered, and Sanders will find it impossible to get to. 50% of the pledge delegates at the convention and then they'll they'll overturn it some kind of scandal will happen some kind of big move big move will happen when Bernie Sanders is colluding with Russia he was not only naked at his wedding and a bunch of bunch of Russians drinking drinking Russian you know vodka but he also said someday I'm going to be president and I'm going to support Russia <laughs> you know some shit crazy shit like that to stop him and then there'll be a scandal and then they'll they'll, they'll pass it to Joe Biden or some people still fucking guy in California still saying they're going to give it to Hillary Clinton <laughs> I don't know man I don't know about that shit that's crazy but someone's going to get it other than Bernie Sanders and they're going to lose they're going to go on and they're going to run against Trump and they're going to lose man. All right, so that is my that is my prediction. That's what I wanted to double down on today, right? That that the Democratic Party, if they pick anybody but Sanders, if they stick the knife in Bernie Sanders' back, right, then they will lose to Trump. But the but the prediction is that there will be a you know a uh, one one of these one of those things you know with the double letters. You know, can't really say it because because YouTube is so. You know, so messed up these days. But there'll be there'll be one of these things, right? One of these, one of these things, right? You know, the things that, the things that, the things that happen sometimes, right? You know, it'll be one of those things where, where they they'll come in, and they'll they'll have to smear Sanders. They're going to smear Sanders. Now, it might not be Russia this time because Russia is an obvious one. They might say, well, it was China. Uh, oh shit! China rigged the machines. China, anything that goes wrong, any discrepancy, right? The last time around, we had we had election in the election fraud. We had quid pro quo. We had money flowing into, you know, the Clinton Foundation. We had uh, flowing into the DNC, laundering the money back to Hillary Clinton through the 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 state uh, elections. We had um, polling cl places closed. We had discrepancies in the in the vote count, the machines, in, in, in the CIA's own uh, arguments, they say that, uh, that there was electronic hacking of the machines. That's not, that's not a foreign entity. That's, that's, the, that's the, the guys in the governor mansions doing that shit. That's the, they're controlling the, controlling the vote, right? So closed polling stations, purging voters off the rolls, 200,000 here in Brooklyn alone. Right, all potential Bernie Sanders against uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, exit polls not matching. Anything more than 2% is considered fraud. We had 12 and 15% discrepancies in the exit polls. And what did they do? They, they closed, they, they eliminated the exit polling, right? They, they canceled it. Right? 
um, media collusion clear. I mean, we, we've discovered through WikiLeaks that, that Hillary Clinton received debate questions prior to the CNN debate against Bernie Sanders. Uh, Donna Brazil told us that. Uh, we, we've seen very possibly murder of a, a, uh, a DNC operative, uh, Mr. Seth Rich, uh, uh, tax evasion, and on and on and on, all the, all the corruption. Right? So, so when those things happen, is what I'm saying, is when those things happen, when Bernie Sanders takes the lead, when the people rise up and support the original candidate, I don't care if he's, look, if he's 80 years old, the young people and the Bernie tried and true, even if he's in a wheelchair, you could, you could wheel him out in a wheelchair and, and that crowd is 100% going to vote for him. The Democrats are sheep. Right? If the Democratic Party gets behind Sanders, then he'll be the next president because the, the Democrats don't have a mind of their own. They, they're... Their voters, their older voters, are vote blue no matter who. Vote blue, right? They'll just they'll just fall in line, right? That's what that's what the Bernie Sanders people will not do because they know that they see the corruption. They got their finger on the corruption, right? So if Sanders, so if Sanders shows the signs of of landsliding or or moving so fast, unstoppable, and refuses to negotiate, refuses to 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 bow out or bend, then you're going to see the big move. And that's the, that's the, um, the big fake FF, right? You're going, to, you're going to see it, and it could be China, it could, it could be Russia again, but something is going to happen. I just wanted to make a you know, documented record. I'll, I'll do more about it. The big move is coming, right? And that'll come, it'll come as, as if California is, is obviously goes to Sanders, and somehow Kamala Harris comes up the winner, or Joe Biden comes up the winner, you will have evidence of election fraud. You're going to have millions of people saying, I didn't vote for no fucking shit sandwich. How did, how did Kamala Harris win? Right? Because right? it's rigged. Right? It's, it's going to be rigged in California. That's probably where you'll see it. And at that point, you'll see this giant scandal, this smear campaign that, that Bernie Sanders was behind the whole thing. And that he was colluding with the Chinese and the Russians, and 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 he had he had secret operatives planted around the country. The direct the the actual mechanism by which the CIA will orchestrate this is it's hard to predict at this point, but it will happen. Is the point? So that's my prediction. It's now on the record. You see, it's going to pan out. So uh, sadly, it'll pan out. So if you can come, kindly become a Patreon of this channel, if you'd like to make a one-time contribution at uh, PayPal, PayPal me, at the Ghost of Brooklyn, uh, this is how I uh, keep the thing going. It's, I, this channel has long been demonetized by YouTube for truth-telling, and uh, you know that's, that's how it works. You know? So we're going to keep it going. And Mark Sconti reporting. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. People are uh, uh, getting unsubscribed. Hit it again. Marcus Conti reporting.